Welcome back again. Today we shall be looking at antiarrhythmic drugs. And before we dive into this pharmacology, it is so prudent that we need to understand what are cardiac arrhythmias. In simple terms, a cardiac arrhythmia is an abnormal heart rhythm. So cardiac arrhythmias commonly occur in the presence of a pre-existing heart disease, for example, myocardial infarction or heart failures. The most common cause of death in patients who have myocardial infarction or terminal heart failures are cardiac arrhythmias. These arrhythmias or dysrhythmias involve the changes in the automaticity and conductivity of the heart cells. Antiarrhythmic drugs are classified into five major groups or classes. This classification is known as the Singh Vaughan Williams classification. This classification focuses on the channels or the receptors that are affected by these drugs. And of importance to note is that antiarrhythmic addresses arrhythmias by altering the automaticity and conductivity of the heart cells. In this diagram, we are able to see all these five groups from group 1 which are sodium channel blockers, group 2 are known as beta blockers, group 3 are the potassium channel blockers, the group 4 are the calcium channel blockers and the miscellaneous drugs fall into group 5. We also need to understand some of the important terms in this case which are conductivity and automaticity. Conductivity is defined as the property of the heart cells to transmit spontaneous impulses starting from the sinoatrial artery node and activating all the heart muscles almost spontaneously. So some different areas of the specialized conductive system are the sinoatrial artery node, the atrioventricular node and ventricular muscle cells. So from the sinoatrial artery node, the heart cells are able to generate 60 to 100 impulses per minute as compared to atrial ventricular node, which generates around 40 to 50 impulses per minute, and the ventricular muscle cells generate 10 to 20 impulses per minute. On the other hand, automaticity is the property of the heart cells to undergo spontaneous depolarization during relaxation. This is because at this point, potassium flows out of the cell while sodium moves inside the cell, and this condition is necessary for it to produce an action potential. And from your physiology concepts, we have five phases of action potential, the phase zero up to phase four. Phase zero is known as the depolarization phase, whereby the voltage gated sodium channels open in a response to depolarization that spreads into the cells to the gap junctions. That influx of sodium ions depolarizes the cells further, causing an opening of more sodium channels. The next phase is phase 1. In phase 1, we have a very short period where the concentration of sodium equalizes both inside and outside of the heart cell. And then phase 2 is known as a plateau phase. In this plateau phase, the cell is trying to go back to its normal resting stage known as repolarization, and the cell becomes less permeable to sodium ions as potassium begins to leave the cell and calcium ions start entering into the cell. Calcium is getting into the cells and potassium is getting outside the cells. And then phase 3 is the rapid repolarization phase. In this phase, the sodium gets closed and potassium starts flowing out of the cell. So we have potassium efflux. As calcium channels close, this potassium ion current succeed in repolarizing the cell. Then phase four, which is the last phase, is the resting phase. And at this stage, the sodium potassium pump restores the cell's resting membrane potential in preparation for the next action. So let's dive into these antiarrhythmic drugs. Like mentioned before, class 1 antiarrhythmics are known as sodium channel blockers. These drugs block the sodium channels in the cell membrane during action potential. And a subgroup under this class is based on their mechanism in the blocking of the sodium channels. That's why we have class 1A 
class 1B and class 1C. Most of these drugs which fall under class 1A have local anesthetic properties and membrane stabilizing properties because of their ability to bind more quickly to sodium channels. So a therapeutic action of class 1 antiarrhythmics are to stabilize the cell membrane by depressing the phase 0 of the action potential. So these drugs bind to the sodium channels and they change the duration of action potential of these cells. Class 1A which are drugs that depress phase 0 and prolong the duration of action potential. Then class 1B they somewhat depress phase 0 and shorten the duration of the action potential. And then class 1C has a marked depression of phase 0 and extremely slows the conduction but has little effect on the duration of the action potential. This can be visualized from this graph on the left side. So the subtypes that we have under the class 1 antiarrhythmics are three. That is the class 1A, class 1B and class 1C. We're looking at class 1A antiarrhythmics. We have the three common drugs that is procainamide, disopyramide and quinidine. Procainamide is known to work by blocking the sodium channels directly surprising the sinoatrial and ventricular nodes. And disopyramide has similar activity with procainamide but has a longer duration of action. Toxicity includes antimuscarinic effects and cases of heart failure have also been reported. And then thirdly we have quinidine. It has similar effects also with procainamide because they belong to one class. But the toxicity includes synchronism that is a uh, triad of tinnitus, headache, and gastrointestinal disturbances, and also causes thrombocytopenias. The class 1A antiarrhythmics work by state dependently blocking the sodium channels, and some of these drugs block potassium channels, so they are non-selective. They will slow conduction velocity and the pacemaker activities of the heart by depressing sinoatrial node and atrioventricular nodes. They prolong the action potentials and the refractory period and they are known to prolong the QRS duration. Class 1A antiarrhythmics are indicated in atrial and ventricular arrhythmias especially after myocardial infarction. The oral and parental routes are available for these drugs and the duration of action is between 2 and 3 hours. The class 1 A antiarrhythmics are known to have increased arrhythmias, hypotension, and lupus like syndrome. Class 1 B antiarrhythmics. The class 1 B antiarrhythmics somewhat depress phase 0 and shorten duration of action potentials of these cardiac cells. Examples of drugs under class 1 B are lidocaine and mexilatin. Lidocaine and mexilatin have a kind of a similar mode of action, but mexilatin has an oral activity and a longer duration of action. When looking at the mechanism of action, the class 1B antiarrhythmics are highly selective and they use a state dependent sodium blockage with a minimal effect in the normal tissues and there is no effect on the potassium channels. Clinically, they are applied in ventricular arrhythmias, post myocardial infarction, and in the cases of digoxin induced arrhythmias. Class 1B antiarrhythmics, for example, lidocaine, are administered intravenously and have a duration of action of about 1 to 2 hours. And the toxicities that are associated with it are like the central nervous system sedation or excitation. Class 1C antiarrhythmics. In this class, we have flaconide as the main drug in the class 1C, which acts by selectively using and state dependent blockage of sodium channels and a slowed conduction velocity with a pacemaker activity. Clinically, we use flaconide in refractory arrhythmias and it has a good oral duration of action of around 20 hours, but when looking at its toxicities, we have increased arrhythmias and CNS excitations. 
class 2 antiarrhythmic drugs. The class 2 antiarrhythmic drugs are also known as beta blockers. The examples of drugs under these categories are propranolol and esmolol. Propranolol is available in all tablets and esmolol is available in intravenous formulation. The esmolol drug is selective beta 1 receptor blocker and has a 10 minute duration of action. We commonly use this in perioperative and thyrotoxicotic arrhythmias. What's the mechanism of action of class 2 antiarrhythmics? The class 2 antiarrhythmic drugs work by blocking beta 1 receptors and have a slowed pacemaker activity. Clinically, we use them as post myocardial infarction prophylactic agents against sudden dead ventricular fibrillation and thyrotoxicotic arrhythmias. And looking at pharmacological properties, propranolol is available in oral forms and esmolol is available as intravenous formulations only and they have a duration of action of around 4 to 6 hours. And it's of importance to know that bronchospasms, cardiac depressions, atrioventricular blockage and hypotension are the toxicities which are associated with class 2 antiarrhythmics. The third class of cardiac antiarrhythmics are class 3 antiarrhythmic drugs, also known as potassium channel blockers. In the class 3, we have amiodaron, sotalol, ibutilide, and dofetilide. This class of drugs prolongs and slows down the outward movement of potassium during the first three of action potentials. These drugs act directly on the heart muscles to prolong the repolarization period and the refractory period. All of them are pro-arrhythmics and have a possibility of inducing arrhythmias. Let's start with amiodaron. Amiodaron works by strongly blocking the potassium channels, producing a marked prolongation of action potentials and a refractory period. The clinical application of amiodarone is refractory arrhythmias and it's also known to be used off-label in many arrhythmias. Actually, it is a broad spectrum of antiarrhythmic activity. Then pharmacokinetically, amiodarone is available in orals and parental forms with a half-life and a duration of action of 1 to 10 weeks. The toxicities which are associated with amiodarone are thyroid abnormalities, deposits under the skin and cornea, and then we have pulmonary fibrosis and optic neuritis. Sotalol blocks the potassium channels and has an adrenal receptor blockage activity. It's clinically used in ventricular arrhythmias and atrial fibrillations. With its sort of availability, it has a duration of action of around 7 hours and has a dose related to sari depointis in cardiac depression. Another class of antiarrhythmic medications or drugs is the class 4 antiarrhythmic drugs, also known as calcium channel blockers. In this class, we have verapamil and deltaism. Verapamil and deltaism work by state, work by blocking calcium channels, slowing down the conduction in atrioventricular nodes and the pacemaker activity, and also they prolong the PR interval. Clinically, we use them in the case of atrioventricular node arrhythmias, especially as a prophylactic medication. And since they are available in oral and parental duration, they have a duration of action of around 7 hours. And the toxicities which are associated with class 4 antiarrhythmic drugs are cardiac depression, constipation, and hypotension. And then we have other miscellaneous drugs that are used as cardiac arrhythmias and all fall into class 5 or group 5. These are adenosine, potassium ions and magnesium ions. For adenosine, it works by increasing the diastolic potassium of the atrioventricular node, therefore causes a marked hyperpolarization and conduction block. And clinically, we use it in acute nodotachycardias. Adenosine is available in intravenous only, 
with a duration of actually around 10 to 15 seconds and patient will respond to cases of flushing, bronchospasms, chest pains and headaches as toxicities of adenosine. The next miscellaneous uh, element we have is potassium ions which increases all the currents of potassium, decreasing automaticity and decreasing the digitalist toxicity. So clinically we use potassium ions in uh, digitalist toxicity and other arrhythmias if the serum potassium is low. In the case of toxicities, both hypokalemia and hypokalemia are usually associated with arrhythmogenesis and severe hypokalemia can cause a cardiac arrest. The third element is the magnesium ion. Though its mechanism of action is poorly understood, it has that possibility of increasing the sodium potassium ATPs activities and clinically we use it uh, in digitalized arrhythmias and other arrhythmias if the solar magnesium levels are low. Magnesium ions are administered intravenously and patients may complain of muscle weakness, severe hypermagnesia which can cause respiratory paralysis. Thank you for following us up to this point and we'd like you to subscribe to our channel, liking this video and sharing with your friends and colleagues. Thank you so much.